In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus asks a whole bunch of questions. Did you notice that? A whole bunch of questions. We're going to come to each of those questions in turn, but first let me tell you a story. Maybe you have a similar story from your own life. Have you ever run out of gas? It happened to me one time. Okay, we were in college, and I was dating my wife at that time, and there was this olive garden that had just opened up. It was about, I don't know, 20 miles north of Ann Arbor. And uh, at the time, in college, of course, I was living, um, sort of trying to make every penny stretch as far as possible. Maybe you can remember these days. But I wanted to take my then-girlfriend to Olive Garden, because that was a really classy establishment. So... We got into, I drove this little blue S10. Okay, it was a stick shift, a great little truck. And like I said, I was trying to make every penny stretch. So the gas tank had been, you know, on E for a long time. But I knew, of course, that when that line is on E, it's not actually in the red yet. And so I could keep going. And so I figured we can get to Olive Garden. I can pay for my girlfriend to have all the breadsticks and soup. That's all she could get, right? Breadsticks and soup. And we'll still make it back, and then once I get paid, I'll fill my truck up with gas. Well, we got there, okay, and we had our meal, and then we got back to the truck, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So I had to embarrassingly call my friend and tell him to come and pick me and my girlfriend up. I was still trying to make a good impression on her at that time. She wasn't committed to me yet. And I tried to deny it, of course. Oh, it's not that I didn't, that I ran out of gas. Something must be wrong with the engine. It's not my fault. Something must be wrong with the engine. And I stuck to that story for a long time. Even after, you know, my brother came and we filled up that, the gas tank with a gallon of gas. I still stuck to that story for a long time that it wasn't my fault, but something was wrong with the car. And it just so happened that when we put more gas in, then it started again. Now, the point of me telling you that story is I want you to think about the purpose of having gas in the car. The purpose of having gasoline in the tank is not simply so that you can turn the truck on. Right? You don't fill your gas tank up so that you can put your car in the garage and let it idle. You don't put gas in the tank so that you can set your car out there for everybody to see how it runs. The purpose of gas in the tank is so that you can drive your girlfriend to Olive Garden and drive her back and you can get her there and back again and her dad never has to find out that you were so foolish that you didn't make sure you had enough gas in the tank. The purpose of a thing matters. Right? The purpose of gas is to get somewhere. You don't get worried about your gas tank running out if you have nowhere to go. You don't get worried unless you remember the purpose. The purpose of a thing matters. But so often, so often, we get caught up on just the means, the instruments to things. And this is what Jesus addresses in our gospel reading. Why do you worry about food? Why do you worry about clothing? Why do you worry? Is not life more than these things? Is not life more than food, Jesus asks us. And it's a powerful question, isn't it? Is not life more than filling your belly? And is not your life more than simply clothing your body? Don't you have a greater purpose? These are the questions Jesus puts before us this morning, and they're good for us to dwell on the questions. This is the power of this kind of teaching, of asking questions. It's sometimes called the Socratic method, right? To put questions to the students, to the hearers, and make them dwell on the questions a little bit. So consider Jesus' question this morning. Why do you worry about food? I know that you do. Although it might not be that you worry about, you know, what you're going to eat for lunch or what you're going to eat for dinner. We can take food here to be a little bit more general, right? Jesus mentions these particular things, food and clothing, as symbols of all of our earthly needs. Wrapped up in food is anything that provides for the body. Why do you worry about food then? Well, the answer is kind of obvious, isn't it? Because we need food, Jesus We need food to sustain our bodies. We need food to power 
our bodies the same way that a car or a truck needs gas. If there's no gas in the car, there's no combustion happening, and you can't get anywhere. And you need the same thing for your body. You need food so that you can actually live. But see, this is Jesus' point. Do not be content worrying about the means. Remember the actual purpose. The same thing can be said about clothing. Why do you worry about clothing? Well, Jesus, because we need to stay warm, right? We need to stay warm. We can't get too cold or we need to look good, right? Because if I don't look good, then I'm not going to have a a healthy sort of a life. I need clothing, Jesus. So I worry about it because if I don't have it, well, I can't do all these other things. But see, this is Christ's point. Do not worry about the means. Remember the end. Do not worry about the gas in the gas tank. Remember your purpose. And then all of those other things will be taken care of as well. Now, I doubt any of you have on your calendar. Do you have time set aside to worry? You probably don't. It would be a strange kind of a calendar if you said on Monday morning from 9 o'clock to 9.30, I'm going to worry. We all know what Jesus says is true, that by worrying, we can't add a single hour to our life. It doesn't do anything. And yet, we find ourselves worrying all the time. It kind of overtakes us. And I would encourage you, as you worry this week, because surely you will, just take note of the things that you are worrying about. Because those things kind of serve you as a diagnostic tool. What are the things that concern your soul? What are the things that your mind pours over? Is it food and clothing? Or is it, you know, more complex stuff? The political situation of our country. The economic situation of your job, of our town, of our city. We could get as complex as we want, but Jesus' questions still carry weight. Jesus could just as easily have said, why do you worry about the economy? Why do you worry about the political situation? Does your worrying actually do anything about those things? Or does it just make you angry? Does it just make you frustrated? Of course, you know the answer, don't you? And yet we can't help but worry. Is not your life more than politics? Is not your life more than economics? Is not your life more than your retirement account? Is not your life more than your salary check? Is not your life more than food and clothing? Hopefully you know the answer to that question. Jesus tells us, look at the birds. You are more valuable than them. Look at the flowers. You are of far greater value than the flowers, and yet your heavenly Father takes care of those things, right? He takes care of the birds. They neither toil nor reap, and yet they are fed. They are provided for. The flowers neither toil nor spin, and yet they are clothed more gloriously than King Solomon. Do you believe that your heavenly Father takes care of the little things and forgets the things that are more important? Do you believe that your heavenly father would actually forget you, but provide for sparrows and flowers? Are you not more valuable than them? Do you know how to answer that question? Are you more valuable than a sparrow? Are you more valuable than a pet? Are you more valuable than a dog or a cat as much as you love those things? The answer, of course, is yes. And if your heavenly Father will provide for the little things, how much more will he provide for you? Your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. He knows how to provide for the little things of this world. And so how much more will he know how to provide for you? If you ever forget how much you are valued by your heavenly Father, then look to the cross of his son, Jesus Christ. There you will see how your Father has valued you. How your father has treasured you far beyond any animal, any bird of the heavens, or any grass of the field. For Christ did not become an animal. The Son of God did not become flesh as a bird, or as a monkey, or as a dog. But he became one with you, with us. He offered himself in your place, in our place. 
he has proven his love for you beyond any shadow of a doubt. Take comfort in these things when you worry, when you concern yourself, when you get anxious and fret and toil over all of the things that your heavenly Father knows that you need. For if he provides for the lesser stuff, how much more will he provide for you who are far greater in his sight? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus says, don't worry about these things. And we hear that and say, but Jesus, if we don't worry about them, then how will they possibly be taken care of? Well, you know, it is possible for you to plan for things. It is possible for you to work for things without worrying and being anxious about them. So Jesus isn't telling you, you know, don't make any plans ever, just sort of exist and live in the moment. But he wants you not to worry about these things because what worry indicates, what worry shows is that we have forgotten our heavenly father. We have supposed, right, that we are the ones in control, that everything depends on us, how much we've planned, how much we've provided for ourselves. But Christ reminds us in such a wonderful way today that you are not in control, and that's okay. There is one who is in control, and he loves you. There is a heavenly Father who knows your needs better than you know them yourself. Can you believe that? That your heavenly Father actually knows the things that you need better than you do. But Jesus says there is something more for you to do. It isn't simply that he wants us to exist in this world without any worries, without any concerns, without any purpose. But Christ reminds us today the higher purpose that he intends for us. Is not the body more than food and life more than clothing? The answer is a resounding yes. We are not simply to live in this world like the animals. We are meant for the kingdom of God. Did you hear how Jesus said it? Do not worry, but instead seek the kingdom of God. Think about how much time you're going to spend this week worrying about all of the stuff of this world and compare that with how much time you are spending seeking the kingdom of God. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we worry about this much and we seek the kingdom of God very little. We have things precisely backwards. And so Christ comes to remind us that life is more than food and clothing. That you have been called out of this world, out of the worry about these things, to seek something much higher and much better, the kingdom of God. So what does that look like? What does it mean to seek after the kingdom of God? Jesus was once asked this question by the Pharisees. They wanted to know, where is the kingdom of God? When will it come? And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is in your midst. What he meant was the kingdom of God is wherever he is at work. And so if you want to seek the kingdom of God, if you want to seek after the higher things than just food and clothing, ask yourself this question. Where is it that Christ Jesus is at work to bring his gracious reign and rule to me? Where is the kingdom of God at work in this world? And the answer, dear friends, the answer is written loud and clear. It is wherever Christ's word is being proclaimed. It is wherever his people are being summoned and gathered together, whether it's in a building like this or whether it's outside or wherever it might be. Wherever the people of God are summoned around his word and his good gifts, there you can rest assured that the kingdom of God is at work. The kingdom of God is at work in our midst this morning. And because it is at work in our midst, When we go out from this place, we go out as little royal ambassadors. Do you want to seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Then don't just be content with gathering with his people, but learn to put his righteous commands, his wonderful commands into practice in your life. Wherever you are called, whether it's as a father, a mother, a friend, a worker, a neighbor, wherever Christ has placed you there, you are a little outpost of his kingdom. Remember his commands, remember his guidance, remember his laws, for they are the good things of his kingdom. Do you worry about food and drink? Do you worry about filling up the gas tank, so to speak, just so that you can have it idling in your driveway? 
Remember the higher purpose that Christ has called you to. Seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. For all these things your heavenly Father knows that you need, and he will provide for them. He will provide not only for the small things of this life, but he will provide the things of his kingdom. His kingdom that comes in the forgiveness of sins. His kingdom that comes wherever the Son of God's name is proclaimed and sung by his people. Here is the answer to Christ's question. Is not the body more than food and life more than clothing? Absolutely. Christ has come so that you may be part of his kingdom, so that you may live under his grace and be an active member, a participant in the reaching out of his kingdom. So ask yourself these questions. Is not the body more than clothing and life more than food? And learn from Christ to answer with a resounding yes. The body is meant for the kingdom of God. My life is meant for the kingdom of God. Let us seek after those things. To Christ be the glory now and always. Amen.